So uh, this is uh, going to be a presentation about the twin paradox. This is essentially the birth of our modern interpretation of the theory of relativity. And then he says, uh, they suggest rather that the same laws of electrodynamics and optics will be valid for all frames of reference for which the, elect for which the equations of mechanics hold. He says here, the introduction of a luminiferous ether will prove to be superfluous inasmuch as the view here today to be developed will not require an absolute stationary space. And then he says, thus, with the help of imaginary physical experiments, we have settled what is to be understood by synchronous stationary clocks located at different places and have evidently obtained a definition of simultane simultaneous or synchronous and of time. And then he says, it follows from this equation that from a composition of two velocities which are less than c, there always results a velocity less than c. And then he says, it follows further that the velocity of light, c, cannot be altered by composition with a velocity less than that of light. Keep this in your mind when Alan starts going through the GPS stuff. This is... So then in 1913, Paul Lavant comes along, or Lavant comes along, and he says, uh, you know, basically he's saying... Experimental, experimental facts that have recently been established have shown that if the equations are valid for one group of observers, they must also be so for all others, whatever their motion relative to the first group. The most commonly cited example about rel relativity of simultaneity is the example of the railway platform in a moving train. It says that these two events, it says that two events, e.g. two strokes of lightning, A and B, which are simultaneous with a reference with reference to the platform are not simultaneous with respect to the moving train and vice versa. In fact, if the signals are emitted from two satellites or two GPS, two D GPS stations at the same GPS time, both GPS receiver on the railway and the GPS receiver on the moving train would acknowledge the two events of the emission of the signal to be simultaneous without this basic acknowledgement. The GPS receivers cannot function at all. The range measurement equation accurately derives the distance down to the millimeter. With no built-in corrections, it just does it inherently by uh, ratioing time against the speed of light. Or they fought through it, and then they they were faced with the decision. You know, do I abandon this belief system, or do I, you know, do I drop my, uh, you know, do I do I take the leap of faith to continue this belief system? Because there's a there's a leap of faith required at that point they've got debt you know funneled into this it's like no i've already i've already wrapped my entire identity around you know believing all this crap you know it's not worth it for me to drop my ego and drop all my pride and drop all this stuff i've built my life around and even that age old like you know the age old inkling that you get maybe if when you first started questioning you know our solar system model is like well even like the elliptical of our orbit has there's a banking motion there right like wouldn't we maybe feel that or be able to measure that and as it turns out the answer is explicitly according to satellites yes yep yeah so they they account for a particular orbit or they account for a particular velocity and they make no corrections outside of parameters that would indicate that there's another reference frame to be referenced to so that's that's how they've that's how they keep time so they have the range measurement equation so now we know how gps keeps times in a local reference frame they're going to use a, a a range measurement equation in a kinematically both of these frames are equivalent to being stationary they're both synced to the same time so that gps time that uh that they established that is that that's that they set up for the ECI reference frame. Everything is synced to that. Okay, so these measurements are going to be done in that frame, and then the ECEF reference frame is also synced to the same time. So, with that, they should have a really accurate way to measure distance down to the millimeter according to mathematic covariance and the assumed speed of c, having a fixed speed. They should be able to take that distance and put it on any coordinate system based on the same time and have accurate uh, distances for everything.